Hello everybody, it's Slippery Jack, and today I'm going to be talking about the debut album by The Parlor Chase, where Judas left his boots. So, The Parlor Chase, previously known as The Parlor Snakes, well, they still are on Spotify, they are still The Parlor Snakes, they recently changed their name. Um, they are an American rock band, plays a very interesting type of um, southern rockabilly that takes heavy influence from gothic rock as well as, as country. I know you're probably thinking, what? Like, how can you combine rockabilly, goth, and country? And the product is one of the most interesting rock albums of this decade. Now, originally Patrick Coleman, the singer and guitarist, was in a goth band called The Daughters of the Netherworld, and after that band folded, he kept writing music that kept that gothic appeal of um, the netherworld but continued pushing in his own direction he was also he also played in a country rock group called pc and the angels of death which was also great by the way and would highly recommend checking out and these songs were yeah these demos were just kind of sat on for several years before uh the parlor chase even formed and i'd say that this album is overall a rockabilly album that just so happens to use a lot of um, goth and country influence. These songs use the traditional rock structure, the post-punk structure that goth usually goes for is nowhere to be found on this album. The overall mood of this album is a very dark one. The lyrics are uh, primarily influenced by southern grotesque literature and from early blues music. There's a consistent theme of fall and redemption that runs throughout this record. And uh, when, so as for individual tracks, When I Change does a great job at getting this thing going with its ominous atmosphere and voodoo influenced beat. And I love those slide guitars or are those pedal steel guitars? I can't tell. But whatever they are, they sound great. And uh, yeah, it's definitely one of this band's most iconic tracks. Love and Death is a cover of the Beasts of Bourbon song of the same name. The original had a lot more of an early blues-like quality to it, but this one the, has better production. It's got this chorus guitar in there, which sounds really good. Really gives it that gothic rock flair. The vocal effects also do a great job at making this thing sound very atmospheric. Really awesome co cover to be sure. And uh, then there's Jesus Loves My Addiction, which is a slow country song. And by the way, when I say country, I don't mean like the, the new stuff that you usually hear on the radio. I mean like uh, early country, like Graham Parson, who was probably a huge influence on this album. And while well, it's a nice optimistic track that breaks up the, the dark atmosphere of the rest of the album, I do feel... I can't help but feel that it's a little out of place. Losing control of you is a, a much more up tempo. It's a lot more up tempo, and it reminds me a lot of Bauhaus, but of course more southern. And then there is a cover of Motorhead's Ace of Spades, which is a really, really weird song to have on this album. But this cover is uh, it's very different from the original. That all the energy. Of, um, of the original song is like it, it's not nowhere to be found it's very uh, very chill very swampy and very laid back and honestly I think this one far outdoes the Motorhead version great stuff to be sure going wrong is one of the darker sounding songs on the album there is also what seems to be some Bauhaus influence it's slow and it's focused on building this very menacing atmosphere. Can't hardly stand it. It is uh, another cover this time of Charlie Feathers. This version is uh, comparable to the ver uh, to the cover done by the Cramps, being a lot more electrified. But this one has better vocals. The Cramps vocals annoyed me. The production is um, better, and the vocal effects are are really cool too. Of the three versions, I'd say this is by far the best. Just Can't See is another slow country ballad similar to Jesus uh, Loves My Addiction. And uh, like that song, a little bit out.
out of place on this album, but I like this one more because uh, I, I like that Graham Parsons influence. You're seeing a lot more of that on here. Uh, Walking You Home starts out with, uh, with a laugh, signifying that this is a, a more lighthearted song that isn't really meant to really be taken seriously. The goth influence isn't really on this one. Instead, it's going for like a country rock kind of thing. Not like the uh, like the other songs, but I, I mean, not like the other country songs. This one is a, uh, is more electrified. It's got more um, distorted guitars in it. Yeah, it's cool. And then there is Ghost Limousine, which reminds me, uh, reminds you that you are what you are listening to. I'd say this is the creepiest sounding track from the album, giving off this feeling of impending doom. They are doing something very atmospheric with the main guitar, and there's some slide guitars in the background for this avant-garde kind of thing, and then there isn't any percussion until about three minutes, and then at, uh, at that time, there is a, uh, they kind of go into more of a blues rock section that is reminiscent of When I Change. You've got some some slide guitars in there too, but this time they roar and it sounds really cool. Definitely, I'd say this is definitely the most interesting song from this album, probably this band in general. Then it ends with uh, Buffalo Jack, which is a, uh, a slow, hopeful country ballad like the other two, and this one doesn't feel out of place at all. I don't know, I just like it when dark albums end on a more optimistic uh, song or like and this one just it just feels like it's meant to be here like I said and overall where Judas left his boots is a very strong album all the way through there aren't any bad tracks at all if there is one problem with it I do feel like those country songs feel kind of out of place but they are they're good songs and I don't really want I wouldn't want them removed either so, I think I can forgive it. This is a, it's a very interesting combination of genres, sounds, and influences, and an album that I have yet to hear anything quite like. Go check it out. I'm feeling, um... Let's go and, let's do an 84 out of 100. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe for uh, more entertainment. And, uh... Let me know something that you would like me to review. Like lately, I've been doing some, I've been trying to catch up on some of the, the new releases from this year. So if there's any new releases that I missed that you think uh, that you think would be um, cool for me to review, yeah, drop it in the comments. And also tell me what you think of this album. Did you love it? Did you hate it? And why? And I will see you in the next one. Bye.